Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Andrew Como, and today I'll be presenting about my project, cryptographically secure proxy bidding and ascending clock auctions. I'll begin. Um, I'll begin with an introduction, followed by preliminaries necessary for my design. Next, due to time constraints, I will not go over my design in detail, and instead will focus on the two new methods I created. Finally, I'll go over my discussion and conclusion. While the most famous example of auctions are these simple single item auctions of EBR Sotheby's, auctions vary greatly in both size and complexity. Some complex multi-item auctions are used to facilitate the sale of millions or even billions of dollars worth of goods and services. For example, the FCC recently completed a telecommunication spectrum auction that raised $20 billion in revenue, and the UK buys nearly all its electrical production online uh, through auctions. These auctions are increasingly taking place online. As these auctions have moved online, cybersecurity threats have increased, and there has been decreasing trust between the auctioneer and the bidders. These auctions are very high stakes, and there are currently no viable methods of securing them. I developed a protocol with three goals in mind. First, the system had to be practical. It had to be efficient and flexible enough to be used in a real-time auction. Second, it had to guarantee privacy. No party, including other bidders, any third parties, or the auctioneer, should learn any information about a bid that is not their own. Finally, the auction should be provably correct for both the auctioneer and the bidders. In addition, it should also have non-repudiation, meaning that a bidder cannot modify their bid once the round is over. My protocol is designed for the ascending clock auction with the simultaneous multi-round ascending auction, or SMRA, as a specific focus. The SMRA is used to sell a set of non-homogeneous goods, i.e. goods that are distinguishable from one another. The auction proceeds in rounds. Each round, the auctioneer announces clock prices for every item, which are the price that a bidder must pay in order to bid for that item. One of the most useful mechanisms of the SMRA is price discovery. Every round, bidders learn new information, specifically the aggregate demand on every item, which leads them to make more informed bids in future rounds. In order to have honest price discovery, an activity rule needs to be implemented. One possible activity rule is that the number of clock bids must be monotonically decreasing from round to round. Proxy bidding, which is a form of automated bidding, is very useful and can be implemented in the SMRA. A uh, proxy bid is simply a bid that is greater than the clock price and is treated as a clock bid for all rounds in which it is greater than the clock price. For this protocol, it is assumed that the proxy is a third party that the bidder trusts not to include with the auction. Um, my protocol uses a commitment scheme known as the Fujisaki Okamoto commitment scheme, which is statistically hiding, meaning that the commitment reveals statistically zero knowledge about the value. It is computationally binding, meaning that um, one cannot reveal a value different than the one committed to, and is additively homomorphic, meaning that one can find the co commitment to the sum of two integers while only having the commitment to those values and not the values themselves. A zero knowledge proof is a proof of some statement without revealing any other information. Uh, my protocol uses a zero-knowledge proof known as a Boudot proof, which is a uh, non-interactive DKP that I number lies within some interval. It has two security parameters, S0 and S1, which determine the probability that the proof succeeds given that the number is not in or in the interval, respectively. As long as S1 over S1 is negligible, this proof is statistically zero-knowledge. The first new design I created uh, uses uh, polynomials with random coefficients to facilitate the comparison between two numbers without either number being known. The coefficients are non-negative, meaning so if one output of a polynomial is greater than or equal to a second output, then the first input must be at least as great as the second. This property allows a proxy to execute bids. Every round, the proxy learns the obfuscated clock price and compares that to the obfuscated bid to determine whether or not to bid. Um, the proxy does not know the polynomials themselves, so these outputs merely appear random. Before the auction begins, the bidder generates a different polynomial for every item and sends these polynomials to the auctioneer but not to the uh, proxy. Because the polynomials must be uh, bounded, the coefficient space must be bounded. In order to maximize the number of possible coefficient combinations, coefficient space decreases as the power associated with that coefficient increases. An obvious way to decrease the coefficient space would be to decrease it proportionally to the coefficient associated with it. However, there is then a clear relationship between the inputs and outputs. This is a scatter plot showing the input-output pairs of 200 random polynomials. On the x-axis are the inputs, which represent the bids, and on the y-axis are the outputs, which represent the obfuscated bids. The r-squared value is 0 0.903, so over 90% of the variation in the output is explained by the input. However, once a new security parameter, S2, is added and set to 5, there is now no visual relationship between the inputs and outputs. In fact, R squared is 0 0.015, so there is no, basically no relationship between the two. 
the security parameter does is that the higher the set, the faster the uh, coefficient space decreases in relation to the um, to the power associated with it. This, in effect, weighs the higher powers less. This is necessary because a small variation in the input raised to a large power will cause a large variation in the output unless that output, unless that power is sufficiently weighed low enough. If, if we look at the R squared values as S2 is varied, we see that as S2 increases from 0 to 3, R squared decreases rapidly. However, once S2 is 4 or 5, R squared stops decreasing. In fact, even if S2 is 20, R squared does not decrease very much. It is therefore unnecessary to set S2 above 5. Not only is it unnecessary to set S2 above 5, it's also a security vulnerability because the higher S2 is set, the um, smaller the number of possible coefficient combinations. And if the number of possible coefficient combinations is too small, the attacker could conceivably generate every possible polynomial. And there may only be one polynomial that matches all the input-output pairs seen so far in the auction. The second novel method I used involved random permutations that allowed a bidder to prove that activity rule is met while not revealing the bids themselves. During this process, both the auctioneer and the bidder will randomly permute the order of the bids so that by the end of this process, neither party will know which items are associated with which bid, preventing either party from cheating. This is a diagram showing the random permutation mechanisms. Please note that all bids and clock prices are obfuscated with a random polynomial so that a proxy could execute this process as well. This process begins with the bidder sending her commitments to the auctioneer, who then homomorphically subtracts the clock prices, then permutes the bids, and sends this new vector back to the uh, bidder. The bidder then masks each commitment, uh, randomly permutes the commitments, and sends its final vector back to the auctioneer. The bidder is now committed to these values. The auctioneer can now send the, um, the permutation used in step three, and the, and the bidder proves, using the Boudot proof, that the number hidden by each commitment is greater than or equal to zero, i.e. that's a clock bid. The auctioneer counts the number of proofs that succeed, and if this number is less than or equal to the number of clock bids in the previous round, he is convinced that the activity rule is met. This protocol is easily adaptable to simpler ascending clock auctions. For example, the ascending clock auction with homogeneous goods. It can be adapted to the ascending clock auction with homogeneous goods by removing the activity rule check. It can be adapted to the single item auction in a similar manner. This protocol meets all the goals I set at the beginning of this presentation. It is practical. There's only a single auctioneer and the mechanisms used are very efficient. It, is, it guarantees privacy. No party, including the auctioneers, bidders, or the proxies, learn any information about bid during the round. And after the round is over, the only the auctioneer gains information. Even then, the auctioneer does not know the value of proxy bids. Finally, the system is provably correct for both the auctioneer and the bidders. The auctioneer knows that the activity rule is met while the round is going on. And after the auction is over, bidders verify they are paying the correct prices. In addition, the commitment scheme is binding, so bidders cannot modify their bid once the round is over. There are many potential avenues for future work. Uh, one possible next step is to create a full implementation of this protocol and test the speed of various mechanisms. Another possible uh, future work includes adapting mechanisms used in this auction, for example, the Fujisaki Okamoto commitment scheme, or the um, random polynomial design, to other complex auctions, such as auctions that allow a bidder to bid on a group of items together instead of each item individually. I could also try and increase the privacy a bidder has by preventing an auctioneer from knowing the number of clock bids during a round or knowing the value of bids below the clock price after the round is over. Finally, it'd be very useful to allow a proxy, proxy bidding without the use of a third party. I have presented a novel and useful cryptographically secure auction protocol. This protocol allows secure proxy bidding, potentially increasing the use of proxy bidding and speeding up auctions. It also is provably correct, preventing illegal behavior such as manipulation and collusion, which will encourage bidders to bid their true evaluations. This will increase the economic efficiencies of the SMI. The SMI is used to facilitate the sale of billions of dollars worth of goods and services every year in the United States. So this protocol could have major implications for the entire economy. I'd like to thank Lawrence Osabel, my mentor. I'd also like to thank Stella Grosser and Michael Dorkin for helping to edit my paper. Finally, I'd like to thank Power Auctions LLC for hosting my research to this summer. Here are my references. Thank you for listening.